Okay, Dee Dee. Here is the video that will hopefully help you out in figuring out how better way to trace things in GIMP. Now, keep in mind, I don't use GIMP, um, so I might be a little slow at figuring out how to do all this stuff again, but bear with me, I'll try and get through it as fast as I can. Um, so here's, here's the file you sent me. You're trying to trace um, a picture of President Obama, okay? Here is the trace you did, and you said that you had halo problems whenever you would save it to a JPEG. One reason that is because um, if you can see right here, let's take this this one off, and I'm assuming you know how to use the, the layers dialog because you had things turned off and on and and things of that nature, so I'm not going to get into that. If, if you'd like me to explain that more, I can, but uh, when I opened your file, it seemed like you had a pretty clear understanding on how all that works. So, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, I'm going to hide this. Okay. So, what happens when you draw with um, raster files? Is it, it does what's called anti-aliasing, and that basically means that it feathers things out to where it's zero. Okay. So it, it just makes it makes things um, flow a little bit better, and I'll I'll show you this in a, in a little, a little bit later. But I'm going to show you why you're getting your halo effect on on some of these images. Basically, the way you're doing it is you're you're trying to draw everything in, which isn't the best way because what happens with when you save it to it as a JPEG, a JPEG will always make everything have a white background. Okay, and I put this red box up here in a layer underneath to kind of show what I'm talking about. Because you have anti-aliasing going around all this stuff and it's trying to feather it out and make it look smoother from a distance, what happens is when you save save it, it, it may look decent right now, but when you save it to a JPEG, actually let me change this to white. So that'll make it more realistic to what what you're what's happening. So basically, what happens is when when you save this to a JPEG, the JPEG turns the background white. So what wherever there's a transparency is going to get a white instead of what you want it to do. So this is what what it looks like when you go to a JPEG, right? And that's the problem you're having is because everywhere in here is. Um, getting turned white because that's what the JPEG dug. It, it just gives it a, a white background around everything. See everything over here it's not doing it because it there's not a there's not a transparency right there. Okay, so that's that's the reason you're having your problem. And now I'm gonna explain to you the best way to solve that. Okay, so we're gonna hide that. We're gonna bring this down here. We're gonna start another layer to draw on and I want that above the white so I can show you some things. Okay, so the best way to trace things in my opinion are up here you have your selection tools. Okay, um, let me turn this on so we can so I can show you some of these. Uh, the square is obviously just a square Okay, and you can use these nodes to to adjust it and wherever this is going to be and use those right and then you can click in the center and move the whole thing around that's how basically how it works and when you use the fill tool it it'll it'll only fill whoops I had that turned off sorry it'll only fill where the selection is. It won't fill out here because that's not where the selection is. Only where... Why does I get, keep turning off? Oh, probably because I keep... Oh, I undid it. That's fine. Okay. Now let me open that. So it won't, it won't fill out here, but it will fill in there. Okay. Now if you go to select and invert, now it won't fill in here 
but it'll fill out here because you inverted the selection. Okay, that's that's a little, just a little bit so you know um, how the how the selection works. <clears throat> okay, then you have you also have an ellipse to do to do circles and whatnot. Okay, and they can get moved around the same same exact way. Um, the freehand, let me get rid of that. This is the freehand select tool. So basically, just wherever you draw is where it's going to be. And when you go back and select it, that's that's that. Um, this fuzzy fuzzy select tool. This selects things based on color. Okay, so like if we come up here to President Obama's hair and select that, it's going to see it's gonna it's trying to make a selection everywhere of that hair that I clicked. Okay, and you can you can set a threshold on this to um To the threshold basically tells it how how much of a difference between the colors it wants. See, so you see how that selected a lot of stuff. So you don't you don't want it that high. You see how now it's it's only selecting certain things that are exactly that color. But see, what you can do is you can come right here and go add to current selection, or you can just hold shift. You see how it switches when I hold shift, or this one. No, I don't want sticky keys. <coughs> Excuse me. Or subtract from it and you hold control and it switches to that. Or you can just click it and it'll be on all the time. Okay, I usually just hold um, shift and control and then shift control to come over to the difference. Okay, so you can go like this and then hold shift and click right here and that'll add all those colors and then click right here and add all those colors. See, so that's kind of how that works. It doesn't work that great. So I never used it when I was using GIMP, and I don't really use it in Photo Paint and Curl Draw, just because it, it, as you can see, it, it doesn't work that great. Okay. So let me get rid of that selection. Now you have the Select by Color tool. It basically does the same thing as the fuzzy, um, the fuzzy selector oh, but but the difference is okay here's the difference between the color select and the fuzzy select is you notice that when I when I was selecting it up here with this one it only did the parts that were touching each other so it'll only go for that color black where it's actually touching each other whereas the color select if you if you select black here any black in this picture It'll select that as well. See how it got some in the eyebrows and the in the eyes down here on the suit. Okay, it's selecting everywhere there's a black. So if you have an image that you know that everything is the exact same color, this tool can be useful um, to select things. And and it also has the threshold to get it a little bit more toned down. Okay. So those those are the main ways you make a selections and selections is how you're going to trace everything. The last way is probably the best way other than the ellipse tool and that is the pass tool which is right here. Okay, basically what this tool does is you click like we can zoom in here. You click and it makes and it makes a dot which is technically a node then actually I want to be right here then when you click again it makes a line if you click again it makes another line okay but here's here's where it gets a little more interesting if you click and hold and then drag you'll see you'll get these these arms and then you can see how it's bending and it's turning it into a into a curved line right so then you can you can go and you can make like curves around that that match whatever you're trying to trace and you can grab these and you can bend them like this you can click on the line itself you see how it selects both those and then you can just grab the the line and manipulate it okay this is going to be this is going to come in 
um, very handy for you once once you get used to using it and it does take some getting used to obviously like like anything does but but once you once you get it down so you'd basically um, select around your whole whatever you're gonna do and then once you come back so you're like you're tracing tracing and once you come back then you'd either hold down control and you see how the, the little the little thing moves to like link or over here you see when I'm doing that you can click that and then link either way you you link to the to the last one that it's doing and you click and that connects the two okay so then you can either go stroke path which I'll show you this really fast will and I just screwed it up because I clicked off here but this will turn it into a to a stroke see and that's how you can get a stroke out of it but mainly mainly what uh, for some reason that's being weird let me get a new one here but mainly what you're going to use the pass tool for is once you make your selections and you get it really fine-tuned um, you're going to go selection from path and that's all that's going to do is give you a selection and it's going to be the same the same type of selection that you've been working with the whole time which will fill in just like any other selection okay so that's like a brief overview of the selections and and whatnot and how you're and how you're going to do those. So now let's get into the anti-aliasing. Okay, if you if you trace it right, anti-aliasing is not a problem because you're going to layer things on top of each other and it's never going to have these um, transparent areas that when you when you send it to a JPEG that will fill in with white. You, you should never you should never have that. Okay. So, what I'm going to show you now is the difference between anti-aliasing and not anti-aliasing, okay? Right over here, on pretty much all of the select tools, you can see anti-aliasing, feathered edges, okay? Um, I'm pretty sure they all have anti-aliasing. Yeah, except for the paths, which I'll explain in a second, okay? So basically we're going to use this, and I'm going to do one as an as uh, anti-aliasing, okay? We'll draw it out, and this one has anti-aliasing selected, and we're going to fill it, okay? Now we're going to turn it off, and we're going to draw another one. Let me move that over a little bit so it's easier to see. And then we're going to fill that one also. So, this circle has anti-aliasing enabled this one does not. You can probably tell a difference already. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but basically what it does is when and let me select so you can see this. Okay. So basically you can see the selection right now that we have around both these circles. Wherever the selection was on the selection that had anti-aliasing turned off is hard you can see that it's it's a hard um, color all the way around no matter what on the anti-aliasing you can see that it basically takes the black and it makes it transparent all the way down to zero and that does make it look better when when you're zoomed out that's that's what makes things look smooth right instead of like jaggedy or pixelated so anti-aliasing is good to a certain extent if you do it right. Okay, so let me delete this layer and we're gonna make another layer. And you do want everything to have transparency and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why right after this. So basically what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna move this one down here and this one we're going to delete 
turn this on and we're going to make a few a few different things. So now I'm going to show you the way you're going to want to trace things in the future. Okay? And I'm not going to trace it super careful just because that will take me too long because I, I don't know this program well enough. But basically you want to start whatever you're tracing with on the very bottom. Okay? Think of, think of these as pieces of paper laying on top of each other. Whatever's in this layer is going to be on top of this. Whatever's in this layer is going to be on top of this and this and so on and so forth. Okay? So for this layer we're basically going to try and re recreate this picture in this stuff. Okay, so so the first thing we'd want to do is we want a background. So we come into here, we get our fill tool, we have this layer selected. Okay, we're going to open this up, and we're going to click this little tool right here, the eyedropper tool. And what that's going to do is we anywhere we click, it's going to pull that color. See how it pulled it here? If we click it right here, and we need to try and get the skin, it gets the skin color. But we're going for the background, so we're going to click there and hit OK, and that changes the fill color. So now we have this clicked. We're just gonna we're just gonna hit the fill right in here, and it's gonna turn that whole entire layer that color. Now the whole layer can be that color because we're gonna layer things on top of it. Okay. So, but now we can't see our image. So what we do is we just turn that layer off. That's gonna be there. It's not gonna move. Okay. Now we go to the next layer. And um, let me move this up so I can keep referring to this. It looks like you wanted a, a black image or a black outline, I should say, around around the whole thing, which is probably good for like a cartoony type drawing, right? So what we'll what we'll do is let me turn that off now. Is basically to get um, what what we'll want to do is like I'm just going to do this super simple and it's going to it's not going to look anything like him but I'm just going to do it basically to get the principle across, okay? So basically what you would do is to get the outline of the whole of the whole entire thing is we'll take this second layer right above the thing and we're going to make a selection around his head, okay. And he, it's like I said, it's it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be anything that's remotely um, good or anything like that, okay. Then the other thing too is is with all these things on, we're going to turn anti-aliasing on, by the way, because we're going to we're doing it this way. You can you can do this add to current selection. So that means if I come right here and make that, you see how it adds to that or you can go um, subtract from current selection and if I go like this then it takes away from that okay so we can go to add to and we'll try and match his head a little bit better okay and then we'll We'll do another one right here that kind of matches. So you can see how using these makes it a little bit easier, but it's it's not perfect, okay? And so then I'm gonna, I'm going to do another one down here just to kind of try and get his shoulders. We're going to take it off the thing and all the way down like that. Okay. So this is just a a super general idea, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill that with a black because we want our black outline. And it, it may not make sense right at first, but but this is uh this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so we filled our black. So now we have our background and our black. Okay. The other easy thing to do is let's say you have the selection and you know that you want this outline to be um, six pixels. 
wide, okay? Then we can go to this next layer and come up here to select and go shrink. We're gonna go six pixels and watch watch this selection when I hit okay, it's gonna shrink it inwards. Okay, see how that shrunk inwards? So now we're gonna go right here and we actually don't want we don't want any of this selection because now now what we're doing is we're just going for the skin. Okay, so now we're going to come back up to this and we're going to click on deselect. Actually, let's do a rectangle here. It's going to have a straight. Oh, dang it. I didn't click deselect. Okay, see how that took that off? No, wait, it didn't. add oh my bad I had the wrong button so we want we want um, subtract from current selection like I said sorry I don't I don't use this program enough to get it to get it quite down but so now let's see we don't want any of this because like I said we're just going for we're just going for the skin, right? And let's and we're still on subtract. Okay. And this isn't the best way to do it. The best way to do it is is with the paths tool. Because that's where you're gonna get all of the um, the detail because you can go around the ears and, and whatnot. Okay, so now we have a rough a rough place for where his face should go. Okay, so then we're going to come in here and we're going to get skin color and go okay, and we're on our second layer. We're going to fill it. Okay. So now, what we have is we have our background, okay? We have our outside, let me get rid of the selection. We have our outside selection that you traced for um, all the black and your outside outline, okay? And then we did our face, and because we shrunk that in, that's what gives us the outside outline, okay? You see how that do you see how that kind of works? Okay, so now we're gonna make another layer with transparency. Take this away. We're gonna hide all of these. We're gonna open this. And we're going to do let's say the eyebrows. Now the one thing you can do is if we have this and this, okay, we already have the black, and this is going to match the black. So what we can do is, instead of instead of drawing eyebrows, we can delete the skin color, so the black shows through. And all you do is just working in any layer really you're gonna you're gonna trace the eyebrows however however you decide to do it and I thought you could rotate stuff but I'm forgetting how I wanna say you can you can rotate um, the selection but maybe all right there yeah so that's how you can rotate wait maybe not I'm sorry I don't know this program well enough but I'll just show you how you can delete this okay so basically you just make a selection right and then you're gonna click on this layer because that's that's our 
Oh wait, let me, what is this? Okay, so you're going to click on this layer because that's where you want to delete it. And when, when I delete this, you may be able to see it delete up here on the layer thing. You kind of could. Okay, so we're going to grab it, move it over to the same eyebrow, other eyebrow. Hit delete again. Okay, and it's, what's that going to do is we have our background now, our outside layer, and get rid of the selection, and the skin. But now we have our eyebrows cut out. Or you can choose to draw them in if you'd like. Okay? It's however you want to do it really. But because we're layering everything on top of each other, there's no transparent areas around here. And I must have done that with anti-aliasing off, but that's okay. But because we're layering everything on top of everything else, and it's like solid colors on top of solid colors, you're never going to have that, that halo effect okay so then on this image you had some little lines drawn in here that weren't necessarily on um, his face but we could we could make it so let's let's say this little line right here okay so we'll, we'll click on this we'll come up here to the brush where's the brush and let's see we'll get a little bit of fuzzy brush, I guess. How big is that? That's huge. Probably gonna go like uh. Actually, let's uh, make that a hard, hard color. Okay. Whoa. That uh, we don't want jitter. There we go. Maybe a little bit smaller. Just that's better. Okay. So now we're gonna zoom in here and we're on this layer okay and remember it's better to keep everything apart just so it's easier to change okay so then we're gonna just trace this down and around and it looks like he's got one right here this around right here and you could trace around the nose like that See, so you don't always have to use selection to do everything. You could come in here, and once you have like your your main your main things done, you could you could draw everything with the paintbrush tool if you want. Once you have, this is going to look really silly, but once you have that done, now what we have is our background. Let me zoom out a little bit. Our background color, our skin, and our accents, or whatever else you want to call it, right? And so I think that is, should do it about, hopefully that uh, kind of helps you understand how you should be going about tracing something to make sure once you um, and I'm not sure exactly how you did it here. These look like a brush mark for sure, and I'm not sure how you did the skin. But you can you can see how they are. They're definitely not touching, and so when the JPEG comes in and fills in with that white background that's default that you cannot get rid of, that's why you're getting your your white halo lines. So, if you do it the way I've shown here with the different lines you'll have to take your time and trace things or or mark things out with the paintbrush really really well you should be just fine the only other thing I wanted to mention was you were talking about sharpen right and let's say you go to well, we'll do we'll do this and it has anti-aliasing on right you you draw the line or you draw the selection and whoops let me turn this on. Actually, let me let me do a new layer, and we'll just do white, and then turn this off. Okay. So we fill that, and it has anti-aliasing, right? Well, um, if you have the selection, you can do this. But then I'm pretty sure if you go to sharpen, that turns that off also. Let's check it. 
Yeah, see, but you have to do it before you use before you fill it. Okay? And also if you if you end up using the pass tool, you, you notice here that there's nowhere for to select anti-aliasing. And by default, I believe let me do some curves so we can get some anti-aliasing going here. By default, I believe it does anti-aliasing. So selection from path. I fill that. Yeah. See, so by default, the pass tool does anti-aliasing. So if you use the pass and you don't want it to have an anti-alias, you'd go up here and hit sharpen and then fill it and then it'll just be the color you want it to be. Okay. Um, that should be it. The only other thing that might be of interest to use feathered edges, but that's basically kind of what it what it sounds like. It it just feathers it down to white. So you can see how um it just makes it a little more smoother and, and taper out and you can let's see selection you can turn that up I might have to draw a new one actually yeah there we go see so I mean just play around with it once you once you get it all figured out it should it should be a lot easier once you get the right steps down. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just let me know in the forum and I'll try and answer them the best I can. The only other thing I was going to mention to you is I know you're doing in GIMP, which is raster, and it's all based on pixels. Another thing you might want to think about is to do it in a program called Inkscape, which is vector-based and it basically has a fill color and a stroke color and I don't use this one that much either but you can change like the the outline thickness you can change the outline color right so and this has a Paths tool also that does the same thing. Um, this is, I prefer to work in vector, which this is vector. Um, GIMP is raster, which is basically pixels. And Inkscape, Inkscape is a free program also. So you can download that and play around with it. I suggest you do both because there's certain things for a cartoony design like this. If it was me, I would do it in Inkscape. It doesn't mean you can't do it in GIMP. You can do it just as easy at, in GIMP, but the problem comes when, um, let's say you have this design and you're trying to put it on a t-shirt, or you design it at like a four inch by four inch and you're not really paying attention it's really hard to make that size bigger to like a 10 inch to go on a t-shirt where with vector um, it's not dealing with pixels it's dealing with mathematical lines and curves so you can basically scale it as big as you want and it'll always have the same resolution I guess you could say where raster images it's really hard to make them bigger and have them look good because it has to take all these little pixels and um, you make them bigger and then the computer has to guess which pixels has to turn to which color to make it look the same as it did when it was smaller if that makes sense so definitely look into Inkscape play around with that but for the time being you can definitely do everything you need in GIMP so don't worry about needing to learn two separate programs but I can explain a little more about the differences if you'd like to know. Otherwise, I hope I've answered most of your questions with this little GIMP tutorial. So like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Alright, Dee, thanks.